Gremlin Stealer is a new info stealer malware variant for sale in underground cybercrime forums. Now this is a threat research write up from Palo Alto's Unit 42, and I was kind of interested in this from uh, some heads up by my coworker. His handle is Laughing Mantis. And this is relatively recent, just at the very end of April, the very beginning of May. Researchers have identified new information stealing malware written in C Sharp called Gremlin Stealer. This stealer's authors have actively advertised it on a Telegram group since mid-March of 2025. The malware exfiltrates data from victims and uploads the info to a web server. It captures data from web browsers, the local clipboard, and the file system to steal sensitive data like credit card numbers, browser cookies, crypto wallet information, and FTP and VPN credentials. So at its core, typical info stealer malware, right? But it's a little bit interesting because this has been running around on Telegram. The authors predominantly distribute it through a Telegram channel named Coder Sharp, and the malware is undergoing active development. But Coder Sharp, I don't think is strictly a Telegram channel. I believe it's a user. Like if I were to visit t.me, just a regular Telegram URL slash Coder Sharp, that's just their profile. Now take it with a grain of salt. I don't know if Anatoly Novikov is the actual individual's name or just a handle or whatever, but presumably a .NET C Sharp developer, Python C++ developer, and they say only crypto PM or private message to order. Taking a look at their profile on Telegram, they have a birth date supposedly of December 6th. Again, whether you trust that or not, they they also have a description here. They actually point to a, another channel, t.me, with that. And going to that is Anatoly's channel with an interesting icon. Channel only accepts new subscribers until they are approved by the admin. So we could, uh, why not, request to join. <laughs> and we'll send them a message, say, hey, what's up? Hello, sir. We'll see if Anatoly responds to us. Oh, he responded. Oh, okay. Hi. Hello. Do you sell the gremlin? Do you think that works? Will that get him? Anyway, the sales and feature advertising. Oh, he says no. He's. I'm getting distracted because he actually responded while I was trying to record like the video. Sorry, were you C sharp dev? I don't know why it removed the messages. Did he like clear them? That was weird. Your profile says .NET C Sharp developer. I didn't expect him to answer. I was trying to continue on with the video because this is being advertised. Oh, he says, well, yes. This is being advertised on different Telegram channels. And what I would like to do is use Flare, the sponsor of this video, thank you so much, to try to look around and snoop and see what else are these malware developers or threat actors up to. I don't know if there's gonna be a lot, but we can take a look. So I'm logged into Flare, and you know this is a cyber threat exposure management platform. But I want to use it to actually take a look what's going on in some of those shady underground forums and Telegram chats, and where is this being sold, and by who? Is it just Coder Sharp? Since we can see the start of the Telegram message that's presented in this write-up, we could honestly just search for this communication. Literally the string, guys, Gremlin Stealer is written in C Sharp. Where was that said? If I just look for guys, gremlin stealer is written in C sharp. Now this obviously has the category set for a lot of the illicit network cybercrime stuff. Uh oh, marketplaces where things are sold, bought, buying, selling, malware, hack tools, ransomware blog sites, telegram chats, etc., cetera, et cetera. So it looks like Flow013 was sharing this in one chat. And then Stocknar, we have four events here though, but what else is it gonna pull down? And this was relatively recent again, right? We're looking at, okay, just the very beginning of April and the middle of April. And those are the only two. Oh, Thorxploit, what are they saying? I didn't see that one. But everything is on Telegram where they're sharing this. Is this the exact same sentence? So Stocknar is saying, Guys, Gremlin Sealer is written in C-sharp, and I want to take a look at the full content here. Gremlin Sealer is written in C-sharp, price $100. If you're interested, write DM. And this is the exact same entry that we saw. What else has Stocknar been up to? We can just click on them and see what else they have shared in other channels. Look like they're only in Telegram, mostly in December of the end of last year and March. Take a look at the sources, just Telegram so far but they're all in this. Let me click view all events and that should be able to pull down, okay, the other locations. Yeah, are they just sharing the exact same ad? They are, yeah, and these are some pictures of Gremlin. I don't know if it's weird that these accounts have like no other activity other than just promoting Gremlin Stealer. I mean, I'm assuming again, that's kind of the job, but it's not, that's not Coder Sharp. What was Flow 013 doing? 
anyway, I'm expecting flow to be the same, right? Just another, yeah. Oh, more messages sent way back in March, but all kind of uh, sharing the same thing. Well, let's try and look for a Telegram messages sent by Coder Sharp or anything really with that username since that's presumably the handle. And they're chatting in Slivki Reborn, all in Russian. Okay, I can't read that easily. Looks like a lot of potential password leaks. Maybe that was info stealer malware that hit the developer, I think. I don't know. <laughs> One of those is a real ass password. Like there's a couple random things in there, but there's also like a 2008-1206. Uh... <laughs> he was still responding to us. Should we ask him about his passwords? Question is though, does Coder Sharp actually do any advertising? Oh. Here's one on dark forums, but this is not strictly Gremlin, and this is December timeline. Coder Sharp posted on dark forums selling Sharp Stealer. Can we go take a look at that? There's a URL. Okay, so this is dark forums, and Coder Sharp account looks like a default profile picture. Uh, no extraneous libraries were used when writing the build. The build is easily cryptoable. The logs come into the bot's Telegram. You don't need to buy anything extra. Everything is already set up for you. Doesn't pop up anything behind itself. Oh, Chrome version 129 plus support. And we don't give them out for a test. Build weight is about 130K kilobytes, right? So the collectors are Telegram, screenshot, desktop, popular cryptocurrencies. Oh. Oh, wow. I mean, it's it's just an info stealer. It's just another info stealer. But look, Project Sharp channel, that's a different, that's a new Telegram account. And t.me Coder Sharp. Let's ask him, what about this? Take a screenshot. Were you still selling Sharp Stealer? Send. What is this going to do? Oh, he's typing. It's not actual. What? What does that mean? All right, we're gonna ignore him for now. See if he responds to anything else. What is the t.me sharp project though? User name white and they have any other profile picture history? What is this? Oh, um, okay, and Russian text. Things I can't read. Should we message this one? Send uh, Coder Sharp a question mark. Be like, what? The rest of the records here though, like, the other conversations that I can track down in Flare are again, more Russian conversations in Telegram in that channel. Coder Sharp has not responded to me and I'm very sad. But back to the article, the group behind Gremlin Stealer claims to have uploaded vast amounts of data from its victim machines to a server at this IP address. We assess the server as a configurable portal that comes with the sale of the malware and they include a couple screenshots here. Now we could see that in the ads within Telegram. Like if we were done with Coder Sharp, we could see in those previous messages from Flow, whatever, like the ones that were advertising this just recently, we could obviously see all of the messages thanks to Flare, like it extracted out the images and even tries to OCR, optical character recognition, kind of pull out the text. So like this, oh, Blacktron is I guess the user that they had kind of specified there. And that's just default Kali bookmark. So nothing fancy there. The other images that they provided, the exact same ones that we see in the article. And look, you can barely see the IP address kind of cut off at the top there, but the exact same. Like that's over in uh, the continuation here. They include the timestamps of that image. And the last image that they include here is actually really interesting. And I, that wasn't in the Unit 42 uh, write-up because you can actually kind of get a snippet of the file names that would have been included in the Steeler logs. Now, we have a lot of other videos where we take a look at different screenshots that Info Steeler malware might be able to grab. Uh, note here, they use a dollar sign for the S and then JPEG, JPEG. So interesting hunting for file names like that. And and uh, looks like a literal backslash for the file names in a couple of these, but weird, wacky, neat. Ragnar is the username for this picture. Not obviously indicating, I don't know, that's not Ragnar Locker. There's no way to like actually jump to that conclusion. I wouldn't intend to, but I did think that little screenshot dollar sign S was kind of cutesy. We could probably track down some things from that with flair. Like if I search for dollar sign cream dot, JPEG, will we see stuff? Oh yeah, okay. Actual logs from March 16th. Mm. <laughs> Let me get back to Coder Sharp. Is it like not real? So here's the thing, that web interface, the IP address that they were tracking is down now. Like that is obviously very much offline, it seems to be. 
if I try to access that IP address, but yeah, that site's not responding to me. I'm not getting a connection back from that. The rest of this digs into the technical analysis, but it's written in C sharp. So you can crack this open with like DNSpy, ILSpy, DotPeak, or some of the others that we've used in plenty of other videos, but it, it, it's another info stealer, right? There's nothing neat or cool or particularly worthwhile to showcase, in my opinion. The bypass Chrome cookie V20 protections kind of interesting, I guess. Like that is everything that we've also been seeing now in modern info stealers. Google made changes to prevent the use of this technique though, as now it's doing a couple different things with the remote debugging switches. So that's not as easily extracted out with modern new, like actual up to date versions of Chrome, as far as I know. But the functions that they use here, write TT cookie to file, ends up putting stuff in local app data. They end up defining all this and you can read it in plain text because like you just crack it open with IL spy, DN spy, et cetera. Obviously support for other browsers to be able to track stuff down. Info stealer syntax as we're used to. Cryptocurrency wallet stealer. Again, it's just what info stealer malware does. The FTP credentials and the VPN credentials is a little bit neat. I don't think you see that all the time, but that's just carving out the files on the file system, which is again, everything that we've done otherwise for Telegram or for Discord, et cetera. System info, blah, blah, blah. It ends up funneling this all out to a Telegram bot though. So I'm curious if we could do some of the other similar techniques and other videos to be able to get all the info back out of that. Granted, I don't think I want that because it's gonna be like info stealer victim data. Don't have any interest in that. Gremlin Stealer sends this data using the Telegram bot shown in figure 18 and it uploads the stolen data to the server using a hard-coded Telegram API key. So we could carve it out. If anything, uh, we could see what it is. But I, it is neat. It ends up posting this with a zip archive bundled up that contains the uh, IP address of the victim. So when we start to look at this in virus total, which we can do now, right? Let's go grab the SHA-256 hash. Thankfully, they do provide that indicators of compromise. Let's go find this sample. So let me just search for that hash. And obviously this is lit up like a Christmas tree, 49 out of 73 detections, because everyone's been talking about this thing. But if you dig into the details, you can see a little bit more of uh, the things that are common between other samples. Oftentimes it's seen either as Ceph Sharp Browser Subprocess.exe and Stub.exe. While it's not actually signed, the copyright and sort of signed info here is pretty common. At least the file version info, like copyright and all this, uh, pivoting off of this does seem to get things that look just like it. But the relations here, can we see the IP address that it actually calls out to? And then you can see it is an embedded URL. Like if we were to look in strings, we'd be able to see this. It's interesting to have Steam community in here, but that's probably just scraping Steam info, trying to get the Steam and like gamer accounts here. But look, you can see the PCAP in the network data. It ended up sending out what would have been a victim IP address like dot zip. So what else can we key off of here? Because if I wanted to look at the content, it's gonna leave behind the calling card to say, this is Coder Sharp's code. Like we could scroll through, oh, blah, 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 strings, but I'm interested, does it even reference Coder Sharp being the individual like Telegram account that wrote this thing? presumably. And yes, that's all here included and probably going to be left behind in the logs just as well. I don't know what fraternizes in here, but if we look for other samples that include that, we're going to find a couple others. And here's one relatively recent, like uh, just a few days ago, the most recent upload. And they're all that same sort of file name, CEF sharp browser sub process.exe. I see one called literally sharp.exe. Those obviously have tons of detections. What about this most recent one? Does that have any other insight for a domain that it's trying to call back out to or the IP address that it'll exfiltrate to? Because if we can find a live one, I think that would be neat, but I don't think we will. Memory pattern IPs? Yeah, no, nothing there. There are no flat, straight IP addresses in this one from what I can tell. And like we could download a sample, but it's, another info stealer, right? All right, Anatoly's not responding to me. And uh, I haven't seen anyone else discuss this other than Palo Alto. 
and I think or Unit 42 and a lot of the other articles and write-ups are just kind of repeating the same info that they have shared. I was more so really interested in a lot of the conversations that would come from the folks advertising this on Telegram and getting the word out and where is it being talked about. Looks like dark forums, looks like, again, those Telegram channels by those actors that are not Coder Sharp, which is interesting, or I don't know if they're alts, kind of curious. Of course, Flair could track down a lot of the info stealer logs as they are being shared out and about. And if you want to dig through credentials or stuff or files that are pulled from it, that's all available. That's the superpower of Flare, and I do want to give them some love as a sponsor of today's video. But the last couple of things that might be kind of fun to do without digging into code is still trying to see are there other infrastructure snippets we could track down. Since they've shared what is presumably that not to say command and control, but like, okay, the Xfil server, given that IP address 207-244-199.46, we can at least see that on like URL scan, right? And it is kind of funny to me that Anatoly and Coder Sharp is presumably like lying that <laughs> Sharp Stealer is not real or he wasn't selling Gremlin Stealer, but whatever. If we were to search on URL scan, we can look for that specific uh, IP address or the endpoint that it was reaching out to. And there's not a lot else that I can find from this. Obviously, a lot of the most recent submissions don't actually have a size because they are all dead and down. But here, you could actually see, okay, the nine kilobyte ones are when it has a response. Index.php, presumably five days ago, uh, had a different 404 that was actually not responding, but when it was 9K six days ago at the time of recording, taking a look at this one, you can clearly see the Gremlin screenshot and the Gremlin logo and all this that was present. Unfortunately, if we try to explore a little bit more by looking for similar, like structurally similar ones, there isn't anything that it has seen quite yet. Looking at the response of the HTML though, you could find other things to key off of, like, uh, Taking a look at the HTTP communication here, show response here will give us that raw HTML. So you can see the Russian language, you can see Russian comments down here. There was a, okay, yeah, for the font size, I think it says like reduced size. And then of course, what we have seen for the gremlin access and the placeholder there for the username and input. It, wh what do you expect? Russian info stealer, sketchy stuff. Interestingly though, the images that we would have wanted to have used to like key off of and pivot, again, are presumably down. Like trying to go access this forsync.com slash web for the icon, the one they provide on here and the URL over there, those are now offline just as well. Proceed to download. Uh, I, I doubt you need to have an account for it to return that image to you. So that seems like it's gonzo. Anyway, light work in this video. I just thought it was kind of neat to try and latch on to presumably a new and emerging info stealer malware sample and variants of gremlin stealer, but how it's being advertised on the dark web is kind of minimal. And I don't know if it's like, obviously it's out and about, like we've, we've seen samples of this in action, but it was neat in my mind to be able to go see where else have they been chatting about this or what other places are they talking in Telegram and dark web forums, etc. And for the research end of that, a good portion of it, we could all track down with Flare. So pretty cool stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please do all those YouTube algorithm things like comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.